hello there <laughs> today was going to be totally different to what it turned out at but um well the end is the same but the beginning is a bit different and trials and tribulations of doing this sort of thing but anyway hope you get something out of it let's get stuck in so this is the wee beastie it's a boots audio c120 from years and years and years ago i've got this down as being about 1978 so let's have a quick tour around it it's a standard box with the brittle outside as you can see there um i don't know how long that's been gone but most of its life that has had that hole there but it's the standard of the time type of cassette case that uh, came with that sort of tape it wasn't a horrendously expensive tape and being c120 it was um not the most plentiful tape around As you can see it's got the compact cassette logo on it which is considered unusual by some have a look at the j card here it's got it says mixed music this was a tape i actually bought myself and that's my awful writing so uh, nothing new there and there's something written on there don't know exactly what it is but uh, it's trouble with pencil is it fades there's a word to the wise don't write on j cards with pencil because it fades i've got a few like that now not all of them that i wrote so there we go anyway we'll put that back in there why are they so difficult to get in unless you don't want them to in which case they, they go all over the place anyway right so looking at the body of the cassette here you can see um the label's gone a bit bubbly and it's uh it's got writing on the other side i haven't looked at this for years and it says um something to do with pat there and again the, the labels are now looking under here it's uh, fairly obvious that the cassette's in quite good condition and um there's screws holding it together four screws in total and it's been record protected on this side so that would be the side that uh, with pat is to do with now the foam the felt is intact metal plate isn't corroded and the tape is a very milk chocolatey brown sort of that is the color it looks in real life so that's the color it is and uh, again it says uh, something on there never mind right so that was fun and next thing i was going to do was go and record it so this is the first time i've put this tape in a machine since well since i've been married and that's over 30 years so uh, there we go anyway it's been it's playing there's things happening on it so it's looking good i've got the headphones on and i can hear there's music and then i'll turn it over and there'll be speaking pat Will be speaking so not worried about that as such pop it over and see where we go from here all right here we go and that's doing all sorts of things uh, yeah that's the music side actually so there we go nice and signal levels there in a tape that hasn't been played since at least 1990 a little bit later we'll play a bit of the original soundtrack that's on there what I did, and I wouldn't recommend this to anybody now, was I put the tape in, rewound it with my headphones on, press play, and, uh, well, not a lot happened after a while. Because I had the headphones on, I couldn't hear anything untoward, and I couldn't hear anything much through the headphones except for the odd phases, so I didn't know what was on the tape at that point, and this is what happened. <coughs> so now we can have a quick look at what's involved in sorting that out. Wasn't too bad, all I had to do is wind the pinch roller backwards and the tape actually unspooled from it as you can see here there's quite a bit of tape would come out at two inches a second there's not a lot of time there but anyway and this is the culprit as you can see but that's not broken tape that's oxide this is the actual splicing tape and it's just pinged off while we're in there just thought i'd have a quick look at this you see there are two slip sheets in there one's white one's black and the tape path is that way i always look because they're not always the same put it back together and put a bit of tape over this hole and we're ready to go Next up is the buff ting thing. Where we want to go by Patrick Patrickos, dynamic and clean.
now at minus 20 db where we want to go by patrick patrickos dynamic and clean Okay, it's chart time. Who's up for some charts? Yeah. I know, I know. With all this type twos we've been doing recently, these ones should be a little bit different and a little bit interesting. Starting with the silence. This is not very quiet. It's at minus 77 dB. Then on to the white noise. It's a uh, ski slope. And then on to the pink noise, which is... A sp it's, a <laughs> it's got a molehill. The minus 20 white noise is... Um, well, it's better. And the pink noise is a lot better. This is the 0 dB frequency sweep, and it's pretty naff. The minus 20 sweep has a bit more life in it up the top end. At 0 dB, 1 kHz, is just a small spike. And at 3 kHz, it's pure. And looking at the plus 5 overdrive, there's only a very small spike. So in conclusion, you've got yourself a tape there that's, uh, well, it's long, 120. And it's got quite a lot of hiss. And it's got a pretty naff high frequency response. But because of the NAF high frequency response, the distortion figures are fairly go low. And um, but the noise at 77 dB is it's very hissy. And uh, I don't know, but it went. It just goes to show the steps and everything. It is not a particularly hi-fi tape. It sounds okay, but it's not good. But it's definitely not a Type Zero. And you've got to remember, this is over 40 years old. This tape. And um, there we go. Anyway, coming up now, as promised, is a, just a bit of recording from all those years ago. Capital Radio in FM stereo, probably with Dolby on, but this is played back with Dolby off. And uh, for breakfast, enjoy. And that was a cut called Sail on a Rainbow. It's coming up for 18 minutes after midnight. Don't forget, if you'd like a dedication, the lines will be open on 4845255 at 15 minutes away from one. Just a few minutes less than half an hour. This is Dolly Parton. Are you man enough? Eh? Applejack. He lived by the apple orchard in this... Concert on Wednesday, April the 18th at the Queen Elizabeth and Tchaikovsky's The Capitol Collection on April the 22nd will feature music which the Wren Orchestra is playing in the Queen Elizabeth Hall on Wednesday, April 18th. If you attend the concert recording, you'll hear Britain's variations on a theme by Frank Bridge, the guitar concerto by Villa Lobos, Stravinsky's Danse Concertante, and Tchaikovsky's Serenade for Strings, Opus 48. The Wren Orchestra, conducted by Howard Snell, with guitar soloist Carlos Bonnell, in concert on Wednesday, April the 18th, at the Queen Elizabeth Hall. Tickets at £1 and £2.50 are available from the box office on 01-928-3191. Thank you, Barry. That was wonderful. As is this. Earl Klug and Cry a While. 